A cargo aircraft, also known as freight aircraft, freighter, airlifter or cargo jet, is a fixed-wing aircraft that is designed or converted for the carriage of cargo rather than passengers. Such aircraft usually do not incorporate passenger amenities and generally feature one or more large doors for loading cargo. Freighters may be operated by civil passenger or cargo airlines, by private individuals or by the armed forces of individual countries for the last sea military transport aircraft. Aircraft designed for cargo flight usually have features that distinguish them from conventional passenger aircraft, a wide, tall fuselage cross-section, a high wing to allow the cargo area to sit near the ground, a large number of wheels to allow it to land at unprepared locations, and a high-mounted tail to allow cargo to be driven directly into and off the aircraft. By 2015, dedicated freighters represent 43% of the 700 billion ATK capacity, while 57% is carried in airliners' cargo holds, and Boeing forecast belly freight to rise to 63% while specialized cargoes would represent 37% of a 1,200 billion ATKs in 2035. History. Aircraft were put to use carrying cargo in the form of air mail as early as 1911. Although the earliest aircraft were not designed primarily as cargo carriers, by the mid 1920s aircraft manufacturers were designing and building dedicated cargo aircraft. In the UK during the early 1920s, the need was recognised for a freighter aircraft to transport troops and materiel quickly to pacify tribal revolts in the newly occupied territories of the Middle East. The Vickers Vernon, a development of the Vickers Vimy commercial, entered service with the Royal Air Force as the first dedicated troop transport in 1921. In February 1923 this was put to use by the RAF's Iraq Command who flew nearly 500 Sikh troops from Kingaban to Kirkuk in the first ever strategic airlift of troops. Vickers Victorias played an important part in the Kabul airlift of November 1928 to February 1929, when they evacuated diplomatic staff and their dependents together with members of the Afghan royal family endangered by a civil war. The Victorias also helped to pioneer air routes for Imperial Airways Handley Page HP.42 airliners. The World War II German design, the Arado R-232 was the first purpose-built cargo aircraft. The R-232 was intended to supplant the earlier Junkers Ju-52 freighter conversions, but only a few were built. Most other forces used freighter versions of airliners in the cargo role as well, most notably the C-47 Skytrain version of the Douglas DC-3, which served with practically every Allied nation. One important innovation for future cargo aircraft design was introduced in 1939, with the fifth and sixth prototypes of the Junkers Ju-94 engined military transport aircraft, with the earliest known example of a rear loading ramp. This aircraft, like most of its era, used tail dragger landing gear which caused the aircraft to have a decided rearward tilt when landed. These aircraft introduced the Trapoclap, a powerful ramp, hydraulic lift with a personnel stairway centered between the vehicle trackway ramps, that raised the rear of the aircraft into the air and allowed easy loading. A similar rear loading ramp even appeared in a somewhat different form on the nosewheel gear equipped, late WW2 era American Bud RB1 Conestoga twin engined cargo aircraft. Post war Europe also served to play a major role in the development of the modern air cargo and air freight industry. It is during the Berlin airlift at the height of the Cold War, when a massive mobilization of aircraft was undertaken by the West to supply West Berlin with food and supplies, in a virtual around the clock air bridge, after the Soviet Union closed and blockaded Berlin's land links to the West. To rapidly supply the needed numbers of aircraft, many older types, especially the Douglas C-47 Skytrain, were pressed into service. In operation it was found that it took as long or longer to unload these older designs as the much larger tricycle landing gear Douglas C-54 Skymaster which was easier to move about in when landed. The C-47s were quickly removed from service, and from then on flat decks were a requirement of all new cargo designs. In the years following the war era a number of new custom-built cargo aircraft were introduced, often including some 
experimental features. For instance, the US's C-82 packet featured a removable cargo area, while the C-123 provider introduced the now common rear fuselage, upswept tail shaping to allow for a much larger rear loading ramp. But it was the introduction of the turboprop that allowed the class to mature, and even one of its earliest examples, the C-130 Hercules, in the 21st century as the Lockheed Martin C-130J, is still the yardstick against which newer military transport aircraft designs are measured. Although larger, smaller and faster designs have been proposed for many years, the C-130 continues to improve at a rate that keeps it in production. Strategic. Cargo aircraft became an important class of their own starting with the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy in the 1960s and a number of similar Soviet designs from the 70s and 80s, and culminating in the Antonov An-225, the world's largest aircraft. These designs offer the ability to carry the heaviest loads, even main battle tanks, at global ranges. The Boeing 747 was originally designed to the same specification as the C-5, but later modified as a design that could be offered as either passenger or all freight versions. The «bump» on the top of the fuselage allows the crew area to be clear of the cargo containers sliding out of the front in the event of an accident. When the Airbus A380 was announced, the maker originally accepted orders for the freighter version A380F, offering the second largest payload capacity of any cargo aircraft, exceeded only by the IN-225. An aerospace consultant has estimated that the A380F would have 7% better payload and better range than the 747-8F, but also higher trip costs. Topic. Types of cargo aircraft Nearly all commercial cargo aircraft presently in the fleet are derivatives or transformations of passenger aircraft. However, there are three other methods to the development of cargo aircraft. Topic. Derivatives of non-cargo aircraft Many types can be converted from airliner to freighter by installing a main deck cargo door with its control systems, upgrading floor beams for cargo loads and replacing passenger equipment and furnishings with new linings, ceilings, lighting, floors, drains and smoke detectors. Specialized engineering teams rival Airbus and Boeing, giving the aircraft another 15 to 20 years of life. Aeronautical Engineers Inc. converts the Boeing 737 to 300, 400 and 800s, MD-80 and Bombardier CRJ-200. Israel Aerospace Industries Badek Aviation converts the 737 minus 300 and 400, 700 and 800 in about 90 days, 767 to 200, 300s in about four months, and 747 minus 400 in five months, and is looking at the Boeing 777, Airbus A330, and A321. Voyager Aviation Corp. located in North Bay, Ontario converts the DHC-8100 into the DHC-8100 package freighter conversion, an A300B4200F conversion cost $5 million in 1996, an A300-600F $8 million in 2001, a MD-11F $9 million in 1994, a B767-300ERF $13 million in 2007, a b 74 7 minus 400 PSF 22 million dollars in 2006 an A330 minus 300 P2F was estimated at 20 million dollars in 2016 and a B777200ER BCF at 40 million dollars in 2017 by avoiding the main deck door installation and relying on lighter elevators between decks, LCF Conversions wants to convert A330, A340s or B777s for $6.5 million to $7.5 million. 
In the mid 2000s, passenger 747-400s cost $30-50 million before a $25 million conversion. A B757 had to cost $15 million before conversion, falling to below $10 million by 2018, and $5 million for a 737 Classic, falling to $2-3 million for a B737-400 by 2018. Derivative freighters have most of their development costs already amortized, and lead time before production is shorter than all new aircraft. Converted cargo aircraft use older technology, their direct operating costs are higher than what might be achieved with current technology. Since they have not been designed specifically for air cargo, loading and unloading is not optimized, the aircraft may be pressurized more than necessary, and there may be unnecessary apparatus for passenger safety. Topic: Dedicated civilian cargo aircraft. A dedicated commercial air freighter is an airplane which has been designed from the beginning as a freighter, with no restrictions caused by either passenger or military requirements. Over the years, there has been a dispute concerning the cost-effectiveness of such an airplane, with some cargo carriers stating that they could consistently earn a profit if they had such an aircraft. To help resolve this disagreement, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA selected two contractors, Douglas Aircraft Co., and Lockheed Georgia Co., to independently evaluate the possibility of producing such a freighter by 1990. This was done as part of the Cargo, Logistics Airlift Systems Study class. At comparable payloads, dedicated cargo aircraft was said to provide a 20% reduction in trip cost and a 15% decrease in aircraft price compared to other cargo aircraft. These findings, however, are extremely sensitive to assumptions about fuel and labor costs and, most particularly, to growth in demand for air cargo services. Further, it ignores the competitive situation brought about by the lower capital costs of future derivative air cargo aircraft. The main advantage of the dedicated air freighter is that it can be designed specifically for air freight demand, providing the type of loading and unloading, flooring, fuselage configuration, and pressurization which are optimized for its mission. Moreover, it can make full use of NASA's ACEE results, with the potential of significantly lowering operating costs and fuel usage. Such a high overhead raises the price of the airplane and its direct operating cost because of depreciation and insurance costs and increases the financial risks to investors, especially since it would be competing with derivatives which have much smaller development costs per unit and which themselves have incorporated some of the cost-reducing technology. Topic: <laughs> Joint Civil Military Cargo Aircraft One benefit of a combined development is that the development costs would be shared by the civil and military sectors, and the number of airplanes required by the military could be decreased by the number of civil reserve airplanes purchased by air carriers and available to the military in case of emergency. There are some possible drawbacks, as the restrictions executed by joint development, the punishments that would be suffered by both civil and military airplanes, and the difficulty in discovering an organizational structure that authorizes their compromise. Some features appropriate to a military aircraft would have to be rejected, because they are not suitable for a civil freighter. Moreover, each airplane would have to carry some weight which it would not carry if it were independently designed. This additional weight lessens the payload and the profitability of the commercial version. This could either be compensated by a transfer payment at acquisition, or an operating penalty compensation payment. Most important, it is not clear that there will be an adequate market for the civil version or that it will be cost competitive with derivatives of passenger aircraft. <laughs> Unpiloted cargo aircraft. Rapid delivery demand and e-commerce growth stimulate UAV freighters' development for 2020. Californian Elroy Air wants to replace trucks on inefficient routes and should fly a subscale prototype. Californian Natalis plans a Boeing 747-sized Trans-Pacific unpiloted freighter and should fly a subscale prototype. 
Californian Sabring aircraft targets small regional unpiloted freighter and should fly a 65% scale vehicle in 2018 fall. The Chinese Academy of Sciences flew its 3,300 pounds (1,500 kilograms) payload AT-200 in October 2017, based on New Zealand's Pak P-750 XSTOL utility turboprop. Chinese package carrier SF Express conducted emergency logistics tests in December 2017 with a Tangoan Technologies TB001 medium altitude UAV, and Plan an 8 turbofan carrying 20 t pounds more than 4,100 nmi 7,600 km. Boeing flew its Boeing cargo air vehicle prototype, a vertical takeoff and landing EVTOL craft, Carpinteria, California startup dorsal aircraft wants to make light standard ISO containers part of its unpiloted freighter structure where the wing, engines and tail are attached to a dorsal spine fuselage. Interconnecting 5 to 50 feet (1.5 to 15.2 meters) long aluminum containers carry the flight loads, aiming to lower overseas air freight costs by 60%, and plan to convert C-130H with the help of Wagner Aeronautical of San Diego, experienced in passenger to cargo conversions. Beijing-based Beiyang UAS Technology developed its BKZ-005 high-altitude, long-range UAV for cargo transport, capable of carrying 1.2 t (2,600 pounds) over 1,200 kilometers (650 nmi) at 5,000 meters (16,000 feet). Garuda Indonesia will test three of them initially from September 2019, before operations in the fourth quarter. Garuda plans up to 100 cargo UAVs to connect remote regions with limited airports in Maluku, Papua, and Sulawesi. Today Most conversions are carried out on older aircraft no longer suitable for passenger use, often due to changing safety or noise requirements, or when the aircraft type is considered to have become uncompetitive in passenger airline service, but there is also a market for new build freighter designs. Freighter aircraft normally have strengthened cabin floors and the inclusion of a broad top hinged door on the port fuselage in addition to an absence of passenger cabin windows which are plugged. The Boeing 747 can be ordered in a freighter version with a large nose door which can be raised above the cockpit for loading. The bulged top deck housing the cockpit was originally designed to allow an unobstructed main deck, and to keep cargo from crushing the pilots in the case of an accident. The interior size of the fuselage is matched to the size of a standard shipping container, stacked too high and too wide. Other types of specialized civilian cargo aircraft configurations include the Swing Tail Canadair CL44 and Boeing 747 large cargo freighter, and the Clamshell Tail CASA IPTN CN235. Examples <laughs> <laughs> Early air mail and airlift logistics aircraft Important. Airlift and logistics. Cargo liners. Mail liners. And mail aircraft. Avro Lancastrian Transatlantic mail. Avro York Berlin airlift. Boeing C-7000 Curtis JN-4 Douglas M-2 Topic: Civilian cargo freight aircraft. Topic: Light aircraft. Casa C212 Aviorca. Cessna Caravan freight door and belly pod equipped. Fairchild Swearingen Metroliner. Let 410. Shorts 330 drop ramp and twin tailed vertical stabilizer. Topic: Military cargo aircraft.
Topic: Experimental cargo aircraft. Hughes H-4 Hercules, Spruce Goose, Lockheed R-6V Constitution, LTV XC-142. Topic: Comparisons. Topic: See also. Airlift Air transport Cargo airline Modular aircraft <laughs>